The story begins with Julius Robert Oppenheimer, who goes through a secret trial aimed at damaging his reputation as a leading physicist of his time. In another scene, Louis Strauss faces a trial to determine if he's eligible to become the United States Minister of Commerce. During this trial, he shares the story of how he first met Robert, shedding light on the early stages of Robert's rise to fame. Robert's journey as one of the era's most influential physicists commences when he studies physics in Germany. Realizing his passion and prodigious talent in physics, he delves into developing an innovative theory of quantum mechanics. After years of dedicated study, he feels confident in his expertise in quantum mechanics and physics. He applies for a job and secures a position as a lecturer at a Netherlands campus. Here, he meets Isidore Isaac Rabi, who introduces him to the renowned German physicist Heisenberg in 1927. Robert earns his doctoral and professorial degrees at a U.S. campus and begins teaching quantum mechanics, a subject still relatively unfamiliar in America. His friendship with Ernest Warrens, a top physicist globally, grows strong. In the beginning, Robert has just one student, but with time, more students become intrigued by his captivating lessons and enjoy discussing them. Lawrence extends an invitation to Robert for a dinner event, where he encounters his brother Frank Oppenheimer. It's at this gathering that Robert meets Jean, a woman with communist beliefs. Their relationship deepens over time, evolving into a romance. But the story doesn't end here as Robert also forms a close connection with a woman named Kitty, and their bond deepens to the point of marriage. While James is disappointed with this marriage, Robert continues to maintain contact with Jean. The following day, while Robert is at the campus, Lawrence issues a warning. He emphasizes the need for caution because the Germans have reportedly developed a new and highly destructive bomb, and due to Robert's prior studies in Germany, there's a concern that he could be viewed as a potential threat. Later, General Leslie Groves approaches Robert with an invitation to join a project known as the Manhattan Project. The project's primary goal is to develop a bomb that can match Germany's advanced weaponry. Given the concern that America is falling behind in terms of military capabilities and could suffer significant losses in World War II, Robert agrees to lead the Manhattan Project. Robert, in his new role, requests Leslie to establish four research laboratories located in a remote area called Los Alamos, accessible by train. A small town is specially built in the midst of it, designed to accommodate the project's workers and their families during their extended duty. This arrangement ensures a high level of secrecy for the research and keeps it far away from populated areas suitable for testing the bomb. Leslie promptly accepts Robert's requests, and in the course of project development, Robert and Leslie reach out to renowned American physicists. They extend invitations to these scientists to participate in the project, while some express initial reluctance due to the demands of staying in a remote location for an extended period, the critical need for their expertise to secure victory in the Second World War against the Germans leaves them with no alternative but to join the effort. Isaac, who is ordered to join the Manhattan Project, has reservations as he fears that this project may lead to severe consequences, including a potentially catastrophic world-ending scenario and the possibility of a more devastating war. However, driven by a sense of duty to his country, he reluctantly agrees to serve. In summary, the town for the project is successfully constructed and Robert, along with other physicists, promptly initiates their work. However, Robert encounters a significant issue due to an erroneous calculation made by a physicist named Edward Teller. Teller's calculation causes confusion among the team, leaving Robert puzzled. He seeks help from Albert Einstein to address the matter. After their meeting and an evaluation of Teller's calculation, Einstein concludes that using this calculation in a bomb could result in an explosion so immense that it might even harm the Earth's atmosphere. The next day, Robert makes the decision to have Kitty and their two children move to Los Alamos. His project involvement requires him to be there frequently. Following this, Robert and the other physicists deliberate on the materials for the core of the atomic bomb, uranium and plutonium specifically. These materials are expected to yield explosive power equivalent to a thousand tons of TNT. However, Edward Teller suggests using hydrogen, claiming it could result in even greater explosive power, equivalent to a million tons of TNT. Despite Teller's suggestion, Robert opts to stick with uranium and plutonium. The discussions then shift to the design of the trigger for the core, a crucial element for initiating the fusion and causing the explosion. Shortly thereafter, physicist Klaus Fuchs joins the Manhattan Project. Robert recruits him despite Leslie's anger, rooted in concerns about the project's confidentiality and the risk of Russian or German spies infiltrating it. In response to Leslie's worries, Robert proposes recruiting his younger brother, Frank, and his best friend, Lawrence. The following day, Lawrence and Frank arrive to assist Robert in the Manhattan Project. Amidst the intense work on the project, Robert manages to maintain secret meetings with Jean, unknown to Kitty. Sometimes, their meetings even extend into spending the night together. During a meeting a few days later, Robert's colleagues expressed their pride in not just creating a new weapon, but making history. 
The bomb they are developing is considered a groundbreaking achievement. However, in the midst of these accomplishments, Robert receives distressing news. He learns that Jean has taken her own life in her apartment's bathroom. The official explanation is depression, but suspicions arise that the American government might have been involved due to her communist beliefs, similar to those of the Germans. Jean's death is a devastating and emotionally complex blow for Robert, adding to the challenges he's already facing. After Robert overcomes his sorrow, he and the others find themselves in a predicament as their research shows limited progress. Meanwhile, Edward Teller continues to advocate for research on the hydrogen bomb, a direction the team had previously rejected. This leads to tensions among the physicists, with many urging Teller to leave the project. In response, Robert steps in to resolve the situation. He reassigns tasks within the team, appointing Klaus Fuchs to take over Teller's responsibilities. However, not wanting to lose Teller's expertise, Robert permits him to pursue his research independently, with a weekly meeting scheduled. With these adjustments and the reorganization of tasks, progress in the development of the atomic bomb begins. They start by creating a bomb model, constructing a testing tower, and conducting tests on miniature bomb prototypes, and the project gains momentum. As progress seems to be made, Leslie urges Robert to finish the bomb by July, despite Robert's earlier estimate of September. Reluctantly, Robert agrees to this expedited timeline. In a meeting attended by several officials and military general, they discussed the choice of location to drop the bomb on Japan. Originally intended for use against Germany, the bomb's purpose has now shifted. Tokyo is initially considered, but opposition arises due to the expectation of minimal casualties. Ultimately, a consensus is reached to drop the atomic bomb on two cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These cities serve as Japan's military headquarters, and it is estimated that they would result in a significant number of casualties, potentially compelling Japan to surrender and the fateful decision is made. Robert manages to perfect his atomic bomb and plans to test it by dropping it from the top of the prepared tower. All the physicists collaborate to get the test ready, assembling a smaller-scale model of the bomb. Furthermore, Robert and the team set up several posts with calculated distances to safely observe the atomic bomb's explosion while avoiding the harm caused by the shockwave. They plan to conduct the test at night to ensure a clear view of the explosion. However, when the night arrives, the weather doesn't cooperate, forcing them to postpone the trial. Despite the delay, they continue to prepare for the test by regularly checking the bomb. When the weather finally becomes suitable and the conditions are right, Robert initiates the test. One of the physicists is assigned the crucial task of monitoring the changes in the electric current, as even the slightest variation could have disastrous consequences. The test proceeds as anticipated, and there is a sense of relief and joy among the team because the successful use of the atomic bomb is believed to ensure Japan's defeat and bring an end to the Second World War. In Los Alamos, everyone extends their congratulations to Robert for his exceptional leadership in overseeing the research. The day following the successful test and the construction of two larger atomic bombs, the realization dawns upon Robert that his invention might inadvertently trigger another conflict between nations. On August 6, 1945, this concern becomes a grim reality as the city of Hiroshima, Japan becomes the first target to be bombed using an atomic weapon, and the world is forever changed by this momentous event. The use of the atomic bomb brought jubilation among military personnel due to America's resounding victory. However, for the physicists involved in its creation, there is a heavy sense of sorrow. Their invention had unintended consequences impacting innocent civilians. While Robert Oppenheimer's name gained worldwide recognition for America's monumental achievement, he remains burdened with guilt for the loss of many lives in Japan. Despite the accolades and admiration from the public, Robert's conscience weighs heavily on him. The guilt he carries begins to take a toll on his mental well-being, causing him to experience hallucinations. The following day, Robert has a meeting with the then-president of the United States, Harry S. Truman. The president extends his congratulations and appreciation for Robert's invention, which effectively saved the lives of numerous American soldiers. During their discussion, Robert expresses the necessity for the United States to collaborate in the field of atomic energy. He warns that Russia is likely to pursue the development of a bomb more potent than what they have. President Truman, upon hearing Robert's concerns, issues orders to advance Los Alamos for improved explosive testing and production. However, Robert's continued reluctance, fueled by his guilt over the atomic bomb he created and the lives it took, frustrates the president. President Truman asserts that the world doesn't focus on who made the bomb, but rather on who deployed it. In this context, he indirectly holds the responsibility for the deaths caused by the atomic bomb. That night, Robert attends a meeting and encounters Lewis, who reveals that the person he had recruited earlier, Klaus Fuchs, is suspected of being a spy for Russia. Robert's negligence has inadvertently drawn suspicion from the FBI regarding Fuchs' alleged espionage activities. 
At another event, the staggering number of deaths resulting from the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki is announced, intensifying Robert's self-disappointment. After this, Robert meets with Teller, who informs him that the discovery of the atomic bomb didn't end the Second World War, but rather marked the beginning of the Cold War between America and Russia. Despite his significant contributions to the nation, Robert starts encountering various problems. One of these issues involves his strained relationship with Lewis, who feels humiliated by Robert during the trial related to the export of atomic bomb materials. Lewis's animosity toward Robert escalates, primarily because he believes that Robert influenced Albert Einstein to dislike him and it lead Lewis to contact an individual named William Borden to investigate Robert's past. Given Robert's close associations with several Germans and allegations of being a Russian spy, he is compelled to undergo a secret trial. During his closed trial, Lewis instructs someone named Roger Robb to ensure Robert's failure. The proceedings unearth not only Robert's moral turmoil, resulting from the creation of the atomic bomb, but also past mistakes. These errors include appointing project members who turned out to be spies and even the tragic death of his mistress. Despite knowing about Robert's infidelity, Kitty stands by him and defends him throughout the trial. In a surprising turn of events, Robert summons the courage to challenge the authorities during the trial. Lewis presents a witness, David, who he believes would support his cause. However, David unexpectedly reveals that many scientists actually hold animosity towards Lewis. This revelation leads to Lewis' failure in his bid to become the Minister of Commerce as various accusations are directed at him. Ultimately, Robert is declared loyal to his country, but he loses access to the project, making him unable to participate in the development of the hydrogen bomb led by Teller. Despite this setback, Robert gracefully accepts the outcome of the trial. In the end, it is revealed that Robert did not incite Einstein to hate Lewis. Instead, they discuss past moments when Robert had shared the mathematical formula related to the potential destructive effects of the atomic bomb he was working on, a formula that had the capacity to endanger the world.